the Comic Weekly Man, the jolly Comic Weekly Man, and I'm here to read the funnies to you happy boys and the honeys. Yes, boys and girls, it's Comic Weekly time, and here I come right into your house to bring a little fun and happiness. Right out of the pages of Pop the Comic Weekly, straight into your living room, your friend, the Comic Weekly Man, the jolly Comic Weekly Man. Well, little Miss Honey, how are you today? I'm just fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, too. Oh, tell me, have your father and mother been enjoying ex-president Harry Truman's story in the American Weekly? Oh, yes. They've been telling me all about it, too. About how Mr. Truman left the White House and went home and moved back into his house on the same old street where he lived before in Missouri. And all his friends welcomed him back. And he's still living there, just like he did before he went away. I think that's very interesting. Yes, so do I. And you know, you learn when you study your history in school that that's one of the wonderful things about the American democratic way of life, that the people elect a man to the presidency, and then when he's through being president, he goes right back again to become one of the people, living among the people who had elected him. Oh, I've been just studying that. You know, I've been worrying about something in the comics uh, since you're talking about presidents and things. Oh, what's that? Well, King Henry's been very cool to Charles Brandon, who was in love with his sister Mary. Oh, yes, that's right. Governments in those days were quite different than they are now. Yes, they were. Now, for instance, the king had put Charles Brandon in prison, and Charles Brandon finally just had to escape. And I'm worried about whether he gets away without being killed. Well, if you're worried, I'll promise you I'll read The Sword and the Rose first. Oh, goodness. Now could we start reading the funny? Puts the Comic Weekly? Yes. Very well, I'll read that in just a moment. But before I do, let's listen to this nice man. Now here we go with Puts the Comic Weekly. And since you're so anxious to read The Sword and the Rose, let's turn over the first page and go past Little Iodine and Prince Valiant. Turn over page three, go past The Lone Ranger, and here on page five is Walt Disney's The Sword and the Rose. Magic work for the music, please. Very well, my lady. It's merry, merry England when knighthood was in flower. Music to bewitch our story hour. In an attempt to escape from the tower where King Henry had been imprisoned, Charles Brandon has been stabbed in the back by assassins hired by the Duke of Buckingham. He's thrown overboard and disappears in the murky waters of the Thames River. Three months later, Brandon's friend, Sir Edwin Caskerton, arrives at Buckingham Castle with a message from King Henry. He tells Buckingham that King Louis of France has died and that the Princess Mary is now free to marry Brandon and has sent a message to Brandon, who she believes to be free. Buckingham, who had arranged for the killers to kill Brandon, tells Caskerton a twisted account of Brandon's ill-fated escape attempt. Caskerton says, yeah, But my lady Mary, she's the virtual captive of the Dauphin. Francis will scarce be crowned before he'll force her to wed him. The Duke answers, I go at once to France. When Henry returns, Tell him his sister's plight was such that I took it upon myself to serve as his ambassador. Last picture, top row. Cascade and leaves the Duke's quarters. As he crosses the courtyard, a man lurking in the tower shadows whispers, Psst! Sir Edwin? Yes, the same. First picture, bottom row. The stranger hands a piece of paper to Cascade. Sir Edwin, day after day, I've looked and asked and waited for you with this message. Caskerton recognizes the handwriting. Swiftly, he reads the note. Can you take me to the man who wrote this? Aye, I can, Master. A week later, the treacherous Duke of Buckingham reaches Paris. Pretending to be King Henry's ambassador, he bluffs the newly crowned Francis into releasing Mary Tudor. And a short time later, last picture, 
Buckingham with Mary at his side. He's on the way to his ship to return Mary to England. He cunningly explains to her. So you see, Your Highness, Brandon, the man you love, was killed in an unfortunate attempt to escape. Therefore, I have come to save you from the cruel king of France and shall always remain at your service. Oh, that Buckingham, he lies about everything, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Well, what will Mary do now that Charles Brandon isn't alive? I wonder. I wonder what that mysterious note is about that the man gave to Sir Edwin, that man who's Charles Brandon's friend. I wonder myself. Maybe we can find out more about that next week. But now, let's go to the very last page of the first section and see if Flash Gordon begins a new adventure today. Oh, yes, please. All right. Here we are on the last page of the first section. And remember that last week, Flash's friend showed him a beautiful new airship. And Flash just loved the ship, and he said he wanted to be the first one to try it out. Yes, and Dale said that he could. I wonder if that means that Flash is going to start a new adventure on another planet. Well, let's start reading right now and find out. Here we go with Flash Gordon. Riga riga doon doon, saskamatash. Let's have music for Heroic Flash. <laughs> the new ship is all ready for flight. And at dawn, Zarkov and Dale are saying goodbye to Flash, who is to make the first solo flight into outer space. Destination, the planet Callisto. Zarkov says, Remember now, Flash, you're all alone on this one. Get your data and get out. No landings. Yes, I know, I know. You can't trust strange planets. They're out to get you. Well, don't worry, Zarkov. I'll bring this baby back. <laughs> And a moment later, Flash is in the ship. With a thunderous roar, the first single-seater rocket ever built races down the runway. Well, Dale, there he goes. Man's first solo flight into outer space. Last picture top row, Flash is on his way alone, heading into the mysterious unknown atmosphere. The long voyage through space requires nerves of steel for a lone man to endure. To fortify himself against the loneliness that comes from being by himself day after day, Flash is supplied with music, a built-in moving picture machine, and plenty of good books. Weeks pass. Endless miles of time. And then, first picture bottom row. Flash looks ahead, and he sees a giant planet speeding toward him. Ah, there she is. Callisto. Jupiter's fourth moon. Well, now let's get in close for some reconnaissance work. Back reading shows no methane in the atmosphere. So far, so good, Callisto. I'll soon find out if you're out to get me. Last picture, he heads the rocket ship for the surface of Callisto. All right, Callisto. I'm coming down to get a quinn. My goodness, I don't see how Flash could stand being all by himself in that ship for weeks and weeks. Neither do I. It's quite an ordeal being by yourself with only your own thoughts and no one to talk to. Well, I hope that when he lands there, he doesn't find danger. So do I. But remember that every other planet Flash has landed on had mysterious things that greeted him. Yes. I wonder what he'll find this time. Well, maybe next week we'll find that out. Now let's pick up the first page of the second section. Oh, yes, and let's see what crazy things Dagwood and Blondie do today. All right, here we go. On the first page of the second section with Dagwood and Blondie. Ramafu, Ramafum, Zim, Zim, Zombie. Conjure me music for Dagwood and Blondie. Today, Dagwood is busy raking up the leaves in his yard. I love a quiet day like this. I can get all my yard work done. Last picture top row, Blondie rushes out into the yard. Dagwood, the Nutleys will be here in one hour. Oh, my goodness, look at me, up to my neck in tin cans. Forget the tin cans and come in the house with me. 
first, pick the second row, they dash in the house. The house will have to be clean from top to bottom. Well, first, we'll have to get rid of all the kids. And in a moment, Dagwood has chased all the neighbor kids out of the house. <laughs> Last picture, second row, Blondie is giving orders to the family. Alexander, start in the kitchen. Yes, Mother. Cookie, you take the hall. Yes, Mother. Dagwood, you do the windows. Yes, Mother. I mean, dear. <laughs> Ten minutes later, first picture, third row, Blondie has dusted the house. Alexander is dumping junk on the ash can. And 20 minutes later, Alexander is vacuuming the rug. Dagwood dashes around the room with a carpet sweeper. Out of my way, or I'll light off. Don't slow down. Finally, last picture, third row, Cookie announces... My room's clean. Yeah, and I finished too. And I'll be through as soon as I sort out the toothbrushes. Oh, oh, the phone. I'll get it. First picture, bottom row, Blondie answers the phone. Hello? Bumstead residence. Blondie Bumstead speaking. Oh, hello. Wait, hold everything. It's the Nutley's. Yes? Oh. 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 All right. Goodbye. Oh, they're not coming. They decide to go to a movie instead. And Dagwood goes. And Alexander goes. And Cookie goes. And Daisy the dog goes. Well, how can you be so happy about it? And last picture, Blondie says cheerfully. Just think I got all my fall house cleaning finished in one hour. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Look, everybody but Blondie fainted in the last well, I'd faint, too, if I thought I'd done all the women's work for them. Uh, uh, but housework is hard. Men should help the women. Well, yes, they should help, but not do at all. Well, I kind of see what you mean. Oh, thank you. Poor Dagwood. I really feel sorry for him. He certainly is funny. I just love Dagwood. Well, now let's turn over the page and see who's there. Oh, look, Roy Rogers. Yes, and remember, Roy and the boy Chili had trailed the outlaws to their mountain hideout. And they trapped Roy and they tied him up. And Marge Preston, whose uncle was killed, had found the trail and followed Cash Baxter, the leader of the outlaws there. But she was captured, too. And you remember that little boy that named Chili was trying to help Roy escape, but he dropped a bottle and it made a noise. I wonder if the outlaws will go into the room before Chili has a chance to cut Roy loose. Well, let's read now and find out. Here we go with Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys. <laughs> ayip by yo now here we go with Roy and Trigger. ayip by yo <laughs> Quickly, Chili takes a piece of the broken bottle and cuts at the ropes that are tying Roy's wrist. Broken glass, very sharp, Senor Roy. You be free pronto. Yeah, good work, Chili. Lucky the etching acid in that bottle didn't splatter my face and you dropped it. And then the door opens. Roy holds his hands behind him as though he's still tied. Gaffer enters. He sees the boy. So this is where you've been hiding, Chili. Don't touch the boy, Gaffer. He's done no harm. Yeah, well, I'll take care of you. And Roy has hit him. Right, get out of here, Chili. <coughs> uh. Roy starts to tie Gaffer up. Chili runs out of the room. Last picture, top row, he runs through the room where Cash Baxter is holding Marge Preston prisoner. Senorita Marge, Senor Roy, he's in the secret room. I go for help. Yeah, well, not if I can help it. First picture, bottom row, the girl rushes into the other room. Roy, hurry. Cash Baxter went after the boy. Grab Gaffer's gun, Marge. This is the harbor who dry ghost your uncle. Why did he do it, Roy? Baxter and Gaffer are counterfeiters. Your uncle tried to skip with some engraved plates they forced him to make. Keep your eye on him. <laughs> Meanwhile, outside the cabin, Baxter is searching for the boy, gun in hand. He stops, looks around. And hey, where'd that blasted kid get to? And directly above Baxter, the boy, Chili, is hiding in the camouflage net. He looks down on Baxter and thinks to himself, yeah, I have fools, Senor Baxter. He never looked for me up here. And then, last picture, Roy comes out of the cabin. Baxter, standing behind a tree, sees him and says to himself, uh, Roger's got loose, but he hasn't seen me. I've still got a chance to get him when he comes a few steps closer. <laughs> Time to 
to cut the rope so I got away. Yeah, but look what's happening. He's walked out of the cabin straight for Baxter. Oh, when Baxter has a gun, he can shoot Roy. Do you think he will? Well, I hope not, because if Roy is shot, everybody will be captured. Who do you think that will happen? Well, we'll find out more about that next week. But now, look across the page. There's little Donald Duck. Oh, my favorite, favorite. Will you please see that? I will in just a moment. But first, here's that nice man again with something interesting to say. Now, here we go again with Puck the Comic Weekly. And on page three of the second section, Donald Duckle. Magic words for the music, please. Very well, my lady. Say them with me, please. Squeeze them, squeeze them, squid it, chicka chat. Let's have music to better quack quack. It's late at night, and the Duck family is in bed. Suddenly, Donald is awakened by his nephew, Louie. Yucky Donald, wake up. Burglary. What? Donald slips out of bed, tiptoes to the door, and sticks his head out into the hallway. And he hears... No. I can't get it open. And Dewey whispers... Hey, listen. They're trying to get in the window. Donald tiptoes down the hallway. And he hears voices coming out of the living room. It won't open, Dippy. It's stuck. Why, it's got to open. There's a bucket of diamonds in there. Uh-oh. Donald tiptoes back to the bedroom. Last picture top row, he exclaims, It's burglars for sure. Quick, get my shotgun. First picture bottom row, Donald, gun in hand, is peering into the living room. He sees two crooks looking in the window. He aims his gun. He dashes to the phone. Help! Police! Police! And then his nephew, Huey, taps him on the shoulder. Say, Uncle Donald, did you happen to notice if I forgot to shut off the television set in there? What? And last picture, Donald turns on the lights in the living room and sees his television set blasted to pieces. And he looks at his nephew, Huey, and goes... <laughs> Wasn't that funny? <laughs> Donald thought they were burglars in the house. And instead, it was the television set which they had left on. Yes, and they were doing a crime story, and what Donald heard was the part where the two thieves were trying to rob the house. Yes. <laughs> oh, that Donald, the craziest things happened to him. Yes, the craziest things happened to him. Well, now let's turn over the page and see who's there. Oh, my favorite paper. It's Uncle Remus. And we'll read Uncle Remus right now. Say the magic words with me. Hippity hoppity, make, make it a habit to give us music for old Bro Rabbit. <laughs> Uncle Remus says, Bro Rabbit and his cousin Jack Rabbit look so much alike that they got the double jointed idea to outfox Bro Fox. Yep, Burr Rabbit has a scheme to outfox Burr Fox. He's telling Jack Rabbit to put on clothes exactly like the ones he's wearing. Yeah, 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 yeah. you see, us look so much alike that Burr Fox won't know which is who. Jack Rabbit answers, Yeah, I sure do look twinish. A few minutes later, they're going down the road. Jack Rabbit and Burr Rabbit, dressed alike, looking exactly alike, and with voices that sound alike. Burr Rabbit says, Now Burr Fox will be seeing double trouble. Then they see Burr Fox coming over the hill. Hey, quick, Jack, you hide behind that tree on that side of the road, and I'll get over on this side of the road. <coughs> and Jack Rabbit is hiding behind a tree. Burr Fox approaches. Burr Rabbit greets him. Howdy, Burr Fox. You look smarty and mean this morning. Burr Fox howls. <coughs> And last picture, top row, Burr Rabbit is behind a bush on the left side of the road. And Jack Rabbit steps out from a tree on the right side of the road. As I was saying, Burr Fox, your head is showing signs of booby hatching. <laughs> First picture, bottom row, Burr Rabbit calls from the left side of the road. Yes, sir, Burr Fox, you is getting the loony tickles. Burr Fox swings his head around. <laughs> he done split up. And Jack Rabbit calls from the right side. Who, me? 
Brer Fox's eyes roll around his head. No, oh, my eyeballs is getting the game. The, the, the day's getting out of your joint. A what joint? And Brer Fox swings his head back and forth. I said, what joint? No, all I see is rabbit echoes. And last picture, Brer Fox dashes down the road. Help! Help! I is discongelated! Help! And Brer Rabbit giggles. <laughs> you see, I told you two heads was better than one. And Uncle Remus says, The eye can run the mind crazy. Oh. Isn't that funny? Jack Rabbit and Br'er Rabbit certainly did fool Br'er Fox that time. You bet they fooled him. Br'er Fox thought he was seeing two Br'er Rabbits. <laughs> and almost made him go crazy. Yeah, he won't sleep well tonight. No, he won't sleep well tonight. Well, now let's go to the last page of the Comic Weekly. All right. Oh, look, here's Dick's adventure. And remember that Dick is in the early days of America in California when gold had been discovered. And Dick and his friend Mr. Kimball had gone looking for gold and they had found it. You bet they did. But thieves attacked them in the middle of the night and stole their gold. So Mr. Kimball, that's Dick's friend, called a meeting of all the honest gold diggers. Yes, and he was urging them to join together to fight against the crooks. And now they're on their way to catch the crooks. Do you think they'll catch them? Well, let's read now and find out. Here we go with Dick's Adventures. Say the magic words with me. Riggedy pack a zack a zick. Let's have music for Adventure to Dick. First picture, second row. Dick and the others are on the trail of the killers. The chase leads ever deeper into the wild Sierras. And then Dick sights their quarry in the ravine below. Hey, there they are. There they are, down there in that valley by those rocks. Hey, watch yourself. They've seen us. And sure enough, the outlaws have seen their pursuers. They whip their rifles to their shoulders. Come on, men. Get behind cover. Hey, wait, wait. I got an idea. Yeah, what is it, kid? Hey, let somebody keep shooting from here, and then some of us could climb up to that big rock right above them, and then we can get at him. Hey, the kid's got an idea. And a moment later, last picture, middle row. While the shooting continues, Dick and two of the party reach a ledge directly above the two killers. Okay, now, push these rocks down on them. That ought to stop them. Yeah, sure. Here goes. First picture bottom row of the rocks thunder down onto the two trapped criminals. The guns are knocked out of their hands, and they stand helpless. You hold your fire, or we give up! We give up! And a few minutes later, last picture, the two crooks are captured. And what are you going to do with us? We're taking you into town and giving you what you got coming to you. Yes, it was. And it just proved that Editor Campbell was right in telling the others that they must stick together. What will they do to those killers now? Put them in jail? Well, we'll find out about that next week. But now I'll look below Dick's adventures. There's Rusty Riley. Oh, yes. I'm anxious to read this because, you remember, there was the theater coming near the milestone farm, and Rusty was going to play a jockey. Yes, in the play. And also in the company, there was a rich local girl who had some very expensive pearls. And also in the play, there is a man named Shorty, and he dressed up in Rusty's jacket and cap and stole the pearls, and he makes it look like Rusty is the one who stole the pearls. Yes, but Rusty was miles away, dressed in his jockey's costume, helping a man whose truck was stuck in the mud. Oh, I wonder how this will ever turn out. Will Rusty be blamed for what's happened? Well, let's read now and find out. Here we go with Rusty Riley. Gallop and run till the road is dusty. Give us music for his horse and Rusty. <whistles> Standing beside the truck that is stuck in the mud, Rusty hitches Dawn to the car and then says to the driver, Okay, mister, I got, I got a sort of a harness on Dawn. You get in the car and then we'll pull too, and I think it'll get that wheel out of the mud. Okay, boy, can't do any harm to try it. Okay, let's try it. The driver throws the car in gear. Dawn throws her shoulders against the rope and begins to pull. Come on, Dawn, come on now, come on. Come on. And then the truck begins to pull loose. 
A couple of feet more, and it pulls up onto the road. Hey, hurry, we did it. Hold on, whoa now, whoa, whoa. Well, boy, you sure did me a big favor. I'll be able to make my carnival date with my dogs now. Wish you'd let me do something for you. Oh, forget it, mister. I'm glad to be a help. I, I gotta go now, though. Good luck. <laughs> Last picture top row. Rusty, back at the farm, goes in the house. Hey, Patty. Hey, Patty. Tex. Yoo-hoo. Oh, jeepers, I remember now. They all went to a movie. There's nobody home. First picture, bottom row, he says to himself. Oh, well, I'll sew the button on myself. And I better put on some old clothes. After all, this costume isn't mine. Meanwhile, at the playhouse where the actors have been rehearsing, a rest period has been called. And then a moment later, Tweedy, the rich girl, rushes out of her dressing room. Hector, my pearls, they're gone. They've been taken from my dressing room. Your pearls? Holy smoke, they were the real McCoy, weren't they? Yes, they were. Last picture, the director says, Now, folks, this is pretty serious. I think all of us, everybody in this theater, for our own protection, should submit to a search. Now, oh, Tweety, where are you going? To telephone the police. My parents will insist on it anyhow, so the sooner the better. Yes, and the director is calling a meeting of all the members in the company so they can all be searched. Oh, and Rusty isn't there. And you remember some of the other men saw Shorty when he was just in Rusty's clothes going to the girls' dressing room, and, oh, I wonder if Rusty's going to be blamed for this because he isn't there. Well, we'll find out about that next week. Now, that's all the time I have. But before I go, here's that nice fellow with some more interesting information. you boys and girls. I gotta go now. All right, Mr. Connie Weekly Man, but I'll be waiting for you next week. Okay, that's a date. And a date with all you boys and girls. Be sure to meet me with our little friend, Miss Honey, next week when I read Puck the Comic Weekly. For I'm the Comic Weekly Man, the jolly Comic Weekly Man. I'll be back to read the funnies to you happy boys and honeys. Don't forget, boys and girls, see you all next week. Your friend, the Comic Weekly Man, the Jolly Comic Weekly Man.